Man, I love space shooters. When I was a kid, arcade games like Galaga and Galaxian were so much fun to watch whenever I got the chance. Which was pretty often too because arcades were everywhere back then. I even recall there being arcades in strange places like Kmarts and gas stations. I loved when I actually got the chance to play them, but as a kid I didn't have a lot of quarters or money, so my chances were really limited. At home when we got our Mac SE in the late 80s, we had the game Space Bubbles, and I played that a lot, but it wasn't the same as those kick-ass flashy arcade machines. Space Bubbles graphics weren't too great either, and there wasn't any sound in that game, so it could never really hold my attention very long. Later, when I discovered Swoop back in the mid-90s, I was taken back to the memories of those arcades, though by then I had already experienced way more in-depth and involved gaming on Nintendo. But the enjoyment found in the simplicity of arcades is something that stuck with me, even today. I don't recall where I originally downloaded Swoop, probably on AOL or one of the many Mac shareware websites that were around back then, but I thoroughly enjoyed this game. Playing it today brings back memories of our family's Macintosh Performa. I loved that computer. Swoop is a space shooter released in May of 1995 and created by David Waring and the almighty Ambrosia Software. It was a really polished game with great artwork and very great audio for its time. As with most, if not all Ambrosia Software, Swoop was released as shareware with the expectation that you register the game if you play it more than 30 days. I don't think there was any real limitation beyond a nag screen when you first start the game up, but surprisingly, by the look of things over at Ambrosia's website, you can still register this game for 50 I think that's actually how much it's always been to purchase this game, which wasn't a bad price at the time, but it's been unsupported for so long that 15 bucks is a bit steep nowadays, in my opinion. In this day and age, just by looking at the game, it should be pretty self-explanatory what it's all about. Now, officially, there were at least a couple different stories or explanations to where you're from and why you're shooting these bugs up, but in my opinion, they didn't need to overcomplicate things. You control a ship at the bottom of the screen with the simple objective of destroying all the bugs at the top of the screen. These guys will swoop down either one at a time or in groups. You get double the points if you shoot them while they're swooping down. The game keeps the controls simple, as you can move your ship from side to side along the bottom of the screen, but you can't move up or down. This is another one of the many, many games that I find easier to play using the old Gravis gamepad. But if you don't have one of those, it's fine too because you can set up the controls to use most any of the keys on the keyboard. In addition to your single shot gun, dubbed the standard issue bullet, there are a number of special weapons available in this game. These include the dynamic duo, which blasts out two bullets, the peacemaker, which shoots a wide area, the war maker, which blasts out three shots at once, the grave maker, which shoots a stream of bullets that can really tear into a line of enemies, and the tactical nuke, which nukes all enemies that are in flight. The other power-ups, which are for the ship, include the Reagan Shield, which has some objects orbiting your ship and protecting you. Be careful though, because stuff can still hit your ship if it makes it between the orbiting objects. The Volvel Class Cloaker, which is a cloaking device that makes your ship fly through the bad guys. And finally, the Ollie North Class Shields, which is total invincibility. All these power-ups last for about 10 seconds and you start off with a couple of them, but you can gain more by defeating the yellow bad guys called the Imperial Flagship while they're in flight. There are a number of enemies in this game, five main types and several special enemies. Honestly, I don't see a huge difference between the types other than the attack patterns and depending on the wave you're in, the amount of shots it takes to take them out. There are also several enemies that aren't documented in the game and the surprise visitors can feel cheap as sometimes there just isn't any way to avoid them if you don't shoot them down the second they appear. The higher the round, the tougher it gets. There's a 20,000 point score bonus for clearing the round without missing any shots, but it's a difficult task. I can't do it at all, but if you're going to attempt it, it'd probably be best to do it in one of the earlier rounds before it gets really difficult. After every fourth round, there's a bonus round just like Galaga. There's strings of enemies that appear in the same spots, so if you figure out where they're going to come down, you'll be in a better position to take them out every time. Graphically, this game looks awesome for a mid-90s shareware title. It uses pre-rendered sprites, which look pretty good in my opinion. If I had any complaint, it'd be that the enemies are a bit small though they are proportionate to the size of the playing field. The audio is really great too. The sound effects are excellent and there are two music choices for the soundtrack, though depending on how much RAM your old Mac has, your choices might be limited. The basic minimal soundtrack requires 2.3 megabytes of RAM. 
The Swoop Techno soundtrack requires 2.7 megabytes, and the dramatic Flight of the Parrots soundtrack requires a whopping 3.6 megabytes of RAM. They're all great soundtracks in my opinion, but I just usually leave it on Flight of the Parrots. The system requirements for Swoop are pretty low. It requires around 2.3 megabytes of RAM, System 7.0 or later up to I believe OS 9, 256 colors or grayscales, a 13 inch or bigger monitor and 640 by 480 resolution or higher. Basilisk runs this game like a champ too, if emulation is your thing. Overall, Swoop is a really fun Galaga Galaxian style arcade game. There's a lot here and it flows so naturally. It's evident that there is genuine arcade passion behind this game. And with the addition of the power ups, bonuses and the graphics and the audio, it's really a good game. It's timeless and it's a lot of fun. It's a shame this game got left behind in the classic Mac days, but if you're up for some old school Mac arcade gaming, I recommend you check this game out.